Well, those German engineers have been at it again. First they gave us the roll-off 14-speed gear hub. Now we have something called the pinion gearbox. It's a bottom bracket mounted 18-speed gear. It's also available in 12 and 9-speed versions, but today we're going to take a look at the 18-speed version. Geared bottom brackets are not exactly a new idea. Uh, this particular one was uh, available back in the 30s. I believe it was a 3-speed. I did some reading on it and I forgot the details, but uh, also required a uh, special, specially manufactured frame, not retrofitable to a uh, normal bicycle frame. Now unfortunately I don't happen to have one of these uh, here <laughs> that I can uh, get my hands on it, but I do have pictures that I've uh, been able to uh, grab off the net and from that I've been able to uh, figure out how the thing works and uh, today I'm going to try and uh, explain it to you. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the left side. Uh, we're looking at it from the point of view of from looking from the front of the bicycle towards the rear. Here we have the input shaft where the cranks mount and it's also the main shaft of the transmission and this is the counter shaft of the transmission this uh, planetary system that you see on the uh, left end of it is actually the shift mechanism the shifting is accomplished by means of rising pawls in the counter shaft all of the counter shaft gears are free floating on the shaft and they are engaged to the shaft by means of the rising pawls actuated by the shifter. The six gears on the left end of the input shaft are splined to the input shaft. In other words, as the shaft turns, all six of these gears turn uh, dedicated to the shaft. The three gears on the right end of the input shaft are mounted on a hollow tube that the input shaft passes through and these three gears are mounted as a unit that uh, do not turn independently of each other. The uh, six gears on the counter shaft that correspond with the uh, six fixed gears on the main shaft uh, as you can see are all of varying sizes so when the largest gear on the counter shaft is engaged to the shaft by means of the rising pawl it will drive the shaft at the slowest available speed. Now why they arrange them in what appears to be such a random order I can't say. I'm sure there's an engineering reason for it. I don't know what it is. But anyway, so we've got uh, six selectable ratios here that are engaged to the counter shaft one at a time. On the right hand end of the, out, uh, the um, counter shaft we have three uh, gears again uh, free floating on the shaft and we select those one at a time uh, to give us three distinct ranges. So in effect what we have is uh, we have uh, six ratios here which we can multiply three times uh, without any overlap with these uh, three output gear. And now we come to the final output, the uh, three gears on the output cluster. Remember I told you those are mounted on a hollow tube which is uh, free floating on the input shaft and uh, the chain ring is mounted on the output side of that. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's where the power flows out of the hub and to the wheel. Okay, so just to do a little power flow demonstration here. So we have a power input here. Uh, cranks turning the input shaft. Now if we have low gear selected, uh, that means that we've engaged this largest uh, counter shaft gear to the shaft. So we have the smallest gear 
on the input side driving the largest gear on the output side and then over at this end of the hub or the hub I keep calling it a hub this end of the gearbox uh, we engage the smallest gear to the shaft and drive the largest gear on the output so the power flow uh, goes through the through here to here to here and out for the slowest ratio in the transmission so by contrast if we couple the smallest gear on the counter shaft uh, I'm not even sure which one that is this one I think all right so if we uh, uh, lock this gear to the counter shaft we have the uh, power flowing from the largest gear on the main shaft to the smallest gear so we're driving the counter shaft now at the fastest available ratio and then at this end if we lock the largest gear to the counter shaft now the power is transmitted from that gear to the smallest one on the output and we're driving the chain ring at the fastest available output speed or 18th speed. So that's it. That's uh, just a brief rundown on how it works. Someday I hope to get my mitts on one and can actually get in there with greasy fingers and show you a little bit more detail. But for now, that's the best I can do. So hope you enjoyed it. See you later.